Hi, Vinod. Welcome to HackerRank AI Day. How are you doing? I'm excited to be here. Yeah, thank you for your time. I don't know if you remember uh, when we publicly launched HackerRank in 2012. Um, I remember giving a demo of the product, and there were a lot of different coding contests, and one of them was Quora AI Challenge. Uh, you asked me to stop the presentation, uh, ignored all the other tiles, and said, like, hey, I want to double click on what this AI challenge is about for Quora, what is the data set that you're using. And fast forward 12 years, pretty much every coding contest on HackerRank is AI. <laughs> um, now, AI has become quote unquote mainstream. Did you think it was going to take 12 years? Was it expected sooner, faster? What's your. Take? You know, I've been writing about AI since early 2012. I wrote my first two blogs on AI in January of 2012. So I've had this long term belief, but I also had this belief that you can't predict time. Mm -hmm. In 2014 or so, we made our first deep learning investment, didn't work out. It was Acquire hired by Google. We made some other investments. But in 2018 is when we decided to invest in OpenAI. Again, I don't think anybody can predict timing, mm -hmm. but you can predict something will happen yeah. and it'll be important or not. And I think that's the bet I've always placed. This is important. Let's go do it and the timing will be when it will be. So it's also been uh, 12 years since I started the company and I haven't seen this level of dynamic change in technology happening. There seems to be a breakthrough every week, sometimes every day, larger context length, agent-like behavior, multimodal reasoning. So what advice do you have for people who are building companies yeah. on what they can anchor onto if what you're building today might be irrelevant tomorrow? I think much more is predictable than people realize. You know, if you are at Pika or Runway, uh -huh. you know what's going to happen. I jokingly say half of the YC class will be obsoleted before they graduate because they're building things that are obviously going to get run over by the next generation of an LLM, whether it's from Google or OpenAI or somebody else. Uh -huh. uh, I think good advisors is what most of these companies are missing that tell them where the world is going and a clear understanding of where the world is going and what is the way you can invest your time and effort in developing something that will sustain and maybe even ride the wave of new LLM features and approaches coming along. So I think that's just mostly poor advice. Not all of it is predictable, but I would guess 80% or more of what will come the next couple of years is quite predictable. But the startups that are not thinking about it will lose their shirt because something will run over them. Yeah. They'll be roadkill. Yeah, maybe if you were to extend this even further than two years, um, if you were to plot the line on the rate of AI advancements, uh, we'll likely get AGI pretty soon. I'm not gonna ask you to predict which year it's gonna come. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of abundance in the world, personal mm -hmm. tutors, personal doctors, and all of those things, certainly there's an upside. But on the other hand, if humans have everything, uh, what are they yearning for, and what happens to humanity's purpose? Um, well, so this question gets asked a lot. There's the first question of where, they do, where do they get their income from? But if we have enough abundance, first the world will be deflationary. Mm -hmm. If all doctors are free, all teachers are free, all lawyers are free, then the world is very deflationary, so things will cost a lot less yeah. in this deflationary world. And I just attended this past weekend a two-day workshop in the economic implications of AI. So that's the first thing to keep in mind, and that abundance will create enough resources for easier distribution to take care of everybody. So there's the idea of universal basic income. Mm -hmm. I first wrote about it in 2016, when I first, uh, I think it was in Fortune magazine, I wrote about it. So that's one question. The second question is the search for meaning. Yeah, that's uh, probably more it, yeah. Uh, I think there, the answer is very different for people who are grown up. Mm. You know, all of us growing up were taught to go to school. Why? So you can go to college and get a job. And so life is about getting a job. Mm -hmm. And we are programmed from age five to get a job. 
Now imagine somebody born in five years from now. They will be taught to pursue their passion and not worry about a job. And I think those people will be in a very different world than the way we think of the world. Just like old people think of the digital world differently than young people do. Yeah. A uh, generation 20, 10 years from now will be dramatically different on how they think they, or what they think they need to do with their life. It'll be pursue a passion, mm -hmm. not pursue a job. Yeah. And that's a really wonderful thing. And most jobs on the planet are not very nice. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have to work at a General Motors assembly line, screwing a tire onto a car for eight hours a day for 30 years, it's slavery. It's yeah. not a job, a respectable job. Yeah. So I think this kind of AI will free humans from this slavery and drudgery, I believe, and let them pursue their passion. The people in this interim transition whose brains are already programmed to believe we need a job mm -hmm. to find meaning, I think we'll have a harder time adjusting, and some will, and some will have a, need a lot of help adjusting. Yeah. You talked about the General Motors um, uh, fixing the bolt, mechanical uh, assembly line worker. But if you think about today's AI, it's probably way more creative and cognitive than it is in mechanical tasks. Um, mm -hmm. was, it, was it surprising to you that it can write better code than it can fold a piece of T-shirt and put it in a closet? Uh, you know, no, it's not. I think we've just seen the first generation of AI. Mm -hmm. You know, what people call the chat GPT moment when it achieved visibility is very, very recent. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, GPT-4 was only released about a year ago for general release. Yeah. So we have to take a longer lens. We've probably seen a small fraction of the development we'll see over the next five, 10 years. The amount of energy going into it, the number of great people going into it, the amount of dollars going into it has all expanded so much, it'll result in much more innovation and much of it in surprising ways. Mm. We let it all be transformers. We let it all be based on the paper. Attention is all you need. Very unlikely. Likely, we will see many more axes of innovation, and we will discover all that. The net result? Some, uh, you know, today, if you want to make an AI more creative, you change the temperature in the mm -hmm. model. That's sort of okay, but there'll be models that are model post-training or post-pre-training that do different things. So clearly people are chasing uh, models for robotics that are foundation models for robotics. Uh, how that plays out, too early to tell. I will tell you almost certainly there'll be a lot more capability in almost every direction. You know, coding is sort of limited in what you can do. Uh, you will be able to do a lot more with coding, but nobody's imagined that big jump. How do you get provably correct 100 lines of code mm -hmm. right, that compiles every single time? Yeah, That's all, I think, going to be feasible in the next year or two and then keep going from there. Lots of developers are watching this. Copilot is certainly taken on a big rage. Copilot specific to coding because it's super integrated in IDE. And there's always this doom of, um, okay, if AI is gonna solve um, all of the code, it's gonna write all the code, then you don't need any developers in the future. And then the other side of the argument is no, it just reduces the toil in software development and it's actually going to make developers even more productive. How should a developer who's becoming one or just in the process think about what the future is going to hold for a developer? I think one has to think about what happens the next five or 10 years mm -hmm. and then what happens beyond. I think beyond 10 years, very easily, AI will allow computers to adjust to humans. Today, humans adjust to computers. We learn how to use Excel. We learn how to insert a row or delete a row or write a macro. So we learn that. We learn how to run SAP or Workday mm -hmm. as an application. In the future, all these AIs will adapt the software to a human. Mm -hmm. So think about it. Humans talk in English. And then if you're not fully understanding what I'm saying or my specification of what I said, 
is incomplete, uh, you ask me a further question and say, what about X or Y? That will be our dialogue with AI that runs the software systems. It's very, very exciting to imagine. Yeah. Software will adapt to humans. When in the past, humans have had to adapt to software or computers. So that's very exciting. And I think 10 years out, that's very much the view. Short term, uh, the, the really good developers will all become 10x developers or 100x developers. Yeah. Uh, and the not so good developers will become better at their job, uh, but they'll be in a much more competitive situation. Now, the amount of things that will need programming will be much larger. I've, I've made uh, a couple of predictions for the planet uh, last November. And one of those, and they're on, under the highlights on my profile on Twitter, one of those is we will easily have a billion programmers on the planet mm -hmm. writing code in natural language. Uh, everything will be programmed. Yeah. You know, why is it that when you go to Amazon and I go to Amazon, we get the same website? My choices, of him, my history is very different there. Yeah. Right? Everybody will get a custom website on every visit as one little example. Yeah. But yeah. that's true of so many other things. And then there's fields we haven't touched. Like robotics is really, really exciting. We'll see a lot of development. So do I believe the need for smart coding talent will go away? No. The difference between average and the best will increase dramatically in my view. So I think there are two parts to it. You know, one is how you how softwares are going to be built in the future and how you're going to interact with it. it's going to be super personalized, very natural like. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how softwares will be, but how it's going to get built. Uh, do you also think natural language would be sort of the default programming language of how it's going to get built in the future or is it more like an outlier? I, I think what we will do in software development is use multiple modalities. Mm -hmm. You might do an AST for a piece of software yeah. and say, code this for me. Yeah. You might talk to it and say, no, I want to see these changes in the software. So think of multiple modalities that affect uh, how software development happens. Yeah. Sometimes it's easier just sketch. Mm -hmm. You know, What do engineers do? Go up to the whiteboard and start sketching. And yeah. I think that'll be there and that'll be translated into whatever it can be, and ambiguities resolved by asking questions. So whether it's block diagrams, sketches, natural language description, uh, saying, hey, build uh, this particular screen, I could see somebody saying, hey, copy, use this database, Postgres, copy every screen uh, and menu item and button of Salesforce onto it. It's conceivable that will happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Likely, very likely, yeah. Uh, and I think like there are lots of companies where you just take a screenshot, convert it into a code with an app that's actually uh, yeah. certainly happening, yeah. Um, how do you use AI on a daily basis? So obviously I use a lot of chat GPT. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the most obvious way. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, every, every time I do email, Gmail's using AI for me. Yeah, yeah. So many, many aspects. And then, uh, of course, you can use Dolly and all kinds of products yeah. uh, to do interesting things. In the, in the quest to AGI, what do you think might be a reason that we may not be able to uh, achieve that? You know, so today... The people who are really developing large language models believe in something called scaling laws, mm -hmm. well understood. And all the data says scaling laws will work for multiple more orders of magnitude of scale. Uh, that is our current belief. But it's possible we run out of, and there are respectable people who believe academics who believe we will run out of scaling laws. Mm -hmm. There's other believers that AI can be better done with other models. So I'm very excited about symbolic logic, mm -hmm. for example, neurosymbolic approaches. I'm very excited about probabilistic approaches. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
each religion has its adherents, and I suspect AI will become more diverse over time while the language models continue to grow a lot and scale a lot and have a lot more capability. So it's entirely possible. You know, we can add two plus two, but we don't need a calculator to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and LLM can compute that pretty easily. But I, if I say, here's a 30 digit number, multiply it with a 30 digit number, you're probably better off having the LLM call a tool like yeah. a calculator or a computer and do that computation, yeah. even if the LLM could do it. It would do it much more efficiently. Yeah. So it's possible LLMs do all the reasoning, and it's also possible some other tool does that reasoning much more efficiently, at one hundredth the cost, for example. Very hard to predict, but clearly, Today, we should be experimenting with all those things and allow for diversity yeah. to emerge. And if scaling laws do hold with, let's say, the current architecture of transformers and others, do you think compute will ever be a bottleneck? Well, if the scaling laws hold, compute will be a bottleneck. Yeah. We don't have enough chip capacity yeah. in the world. One of my other predictions is most of the access to the internet will be by agents, not by humans. Mm. Think about it. So if there's 20 billion agents running around and they're running around 24 hours a day, you need so much chip capacity, we don't have that chip capacity to build that thing for humanity. Yeah. So we'll have to build a lot more chips. Once you build that, we'll have to build a lot more computers and data centers and then power generation. So, you know, these are hard choices because they're so unpredictable today. Yeah. I mean, if 20 billion agents are going to be running, there is just uh, so much of security issues that also can easily crop up there, right? So how, how do you think, I know you're big on this, like how do you think about safely deploying AGI? I believe once a problem is defined, humans do a pretty good job of solving it. Mm -hmm. So can I tell you precisely how? No. Can mm -hmm. I tell you I think it'll be solved? Most likely. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it. And. In terms of just like coming back, but I'm an optimist. I'm not a pessimist. Yeah, yeah, I know that. <laughs> I have, I have a, I have a question at the end for you in terms of your predictions. Um, just even like uh, uh, coming back to the to the developer thing. Mm -hmm. Today, like whoever you want to call as a 10x developer, is somebody who can translate a particular requirement into a very scalable architecture, writes clean code that is very secure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if a bunch of these things are actually going to be "quote unquote" outsourced to an AI agent, mm -hmm. what do you think will be like the characteristics of a of the future ten x developer? Very hard to predict. Very hard. You know, today you you could conceive at least the architecture will be done by yeah. a developer, but yeah. I could see why an AI could do the architecture too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's hard to imagine a world that is very, very likely, which is all expertise anywhere, whether you're talking about an oncologist or yeah. an endocrinologist or a structural engineer yeah. or an architect or a coder, is in an AI. I think it's very likely. I don't know when. Uh, and it may get slowed down because society resists it. That's mm. very possible. So with my predictions have a, a set of reasons why none of this may happen and why it may slow down or not happen. Uh, but it's very unpredictable. I wouldn't guess. This one, this one was actually not even in my thing, but as you're just saying, I'm just curious to hear your thoughts. Um, humans are very unforgiving for when it comes to machines. You know, you want the absolute right answer. Um, if a self-driving car gets into an accident, it gets way more press than a human, uh, even though rationally speaking, it might be a better driver than humans. So if you imagine the future systems to all be through the machines is going to be quote unquote reasoning through AGI, where it's not 100% correct, but it's more of reasoning systems. Do you think that will in itself inhibit the ability to adapt because it's hard to rewire our mental models that I, are being- the thing to realize is us engineers live in the world of reason and logic. Mm. Most of the world operates on in the world of narratives, storytelling. And people can tell stories. I mean, you look at the economy today. 
The Biden economy is reading much better than what Trump did, but the narrative mm -hmm. is the opposite. Yeah. So we will have to learn how to tell the right narratives, and people who want to resist AI will tell the opposite narrative. We've seen this repeatedly. It'll happen again. Mm -hmm. And it'll be a question of who's better at storytelling. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, interesting. So uh, we're coming to the end, the note. Um, I'm going to give you a, a name of an industry. And I like your prediction on how AI is going to transform in five mm -hmm. years. Okay. Not 10, not 20, because mm -hmm. I don't want dystopian, utopian views. Even though you're an optimist, maybe in five years itself, you'll predict something utopian. So I'll give an industry, tell me how AI is going to transform. Mm -hmm. um, education. Personal tutors for every kid on the planet that are near free. Transportation. Self-driving public transit systems. That's one of my predictions. And we, we can start to remove most cars from most cities because a public transit system based on self-driving vehicles and closed systems will be far better than owning a chauffeured car. You'll get there faster, cheaper, much more predictably. Entertainment, movies, and music. Almost all music will be AI-assisted. There'll be human music, human plus AI, and AI only. There'll be stories written by AI, AIs and AI plus humans. And there'll be a much wider range of content driven by AI. Mm -hmm. Even anime and movies will be done by AI. Healthcare. Almost all expertise, like primary care doctors, oncologists, within five years will start to be FDA approved as an app as a doctor. Five years, right? Five Without, years. Okay, wow, that's, uh, that's pretty, that, that'll be pretty amazing. Uh, uh, venture capital. Hard to tell. I, it, you know, many I know people, you're in the venture assistance industry, but yeah. like, yeah. I think the thing to understand is in all these areas, people will practice because they love practicing, whether you're a physician or something else. And a physician with an AI assist will be better than the, the physician by yeah. themselves. No, I'll still be practicing in five years, mm -hmm. but it may be there's an AI, I think it'll take much longer in venture capital only because we don't have many data sources. Got it, and finally, developer. I think everybody will be 10x better than they are today in what they can do. Got it, awesome. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Vinod, for Thank participating you. in Hacker and Thank you.